Hey Thinksters and welcome to this video where I want to show you real quick how to average a list of lists in Python and in particular say we have the following data set yeah, a two dimensional data set with four rows and three columns and now we want to calculate the average along the columns okay so the column average for example here given this data set we want to have um, like we want to calculate the average which is like 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 it's 2 divided by Four, because we have four elements it's 0.5 okay so the average of this column would be 0.5 the average of this column would be 0.75 and the average of this column would be 0.25 so this is the output which we want to expect and uh, yeah how to calculate this um, there are three methods you can use and uh, like the first method only uses pure Python uh, functionality so it doesn't import an external library or so the second method uses the numpy library which is also the most concise version so if you are fine with using the numpy library then use the second version and the third version it's kind of it's just a trick that that teaches you some python basics like the map function and um and the zip function but i just included it for comprehensibility but often the first two methods will be the best okay so the first method just uses Pure Python and list comprehension is very concise and it works easily. So you can, so you list comprehension uh, consists of it basically creates a new list, so indicated by the square bracket notation. And now in list comprehension we always have an expression and a context. The context gives us contextual information about the variables or the the values we want to include in the, into the list, and the expression modifies these values. Okay, so here as context we use for x in data basically so we have now if we would do this we would basically iterate over all rows in our data okay but we don't want to do this we want to um, average all columns so we want to like how can we iterate over all, over all columns in this data matrix it's not possible um, easily in pure python so we have to slightly modify this uh, set we have to transpose the data mat matrix and how do we do this we transpose the matrix by unpacking the data into the zip function and then zipping it together okay and this basically now creates a new list with three rows and four columns and this new list has basically as row the first row is 0 1 0 1 the second row is 1 1 0 1 and the third one is 0 1 0 0 okay so this is exactly what we want to have now we have like three lists of lists uh, and the columns are ordered in this list and we basically um, yeah maybe we can study this example in the, in the shell quickly. Why does it work? So of course it throws, throws, throws an error because I'm not ready yet. But say you have a list, say, um, I just want to quickly show the zip function how it works. So um, one, two, three, and four, five, six. Um, if you zip together, now, now if you zip the list, this doesn't make any sense because the list, you can zip multiple, the zip function expects some iterables, so multiple iterables. So you can, for example, zip the first value of the list and the second value of the list because those are lists themselves, okay? So now the first input is this list, the second input is this list. And now it, the zip function simply um, uh, pairs the elements at a certain index. So for example, it pairs the element 1 and 4, it pairs the element 2 and 5, and it pairs the elements 3 and 6, okay? So we have three pairs of elements. And if you print this, uh, um, first you need to convert it to a list but if you print this then you obtain this output okay so we have the first elements are paired of the two lists the second elements and the third elements are paired okay and now you can already see basically what we did yeah so we, here we have a list of uh, uh, like uh, um, two-dimensional matrix you can think of it as a two-dimensional matrix this is the first row this is the second row and now these rows became columns in our by transposing it basically yeah so the zip function basically transposes all um, transposes the matrix if you if you apply it to a list of lists but first you need to unpack the elements here and um, basically an uh, semantically equivalent way of writing this would be this one okay uh, for sorry I need to pass it to the zip function so this one is a semantically equivalent way why because um, here we have here in the zip function we first and um, use the first list as an, as an argument to the zip function and the second and then we pass the second list as an argument so we have 
two lists. The two lists here in our variable LST are passed as an argument to the SIP function. And if we unpack them, so we use the asterisk operator, then we do the, actually the same. Yeah, We just unpack all lists in the list of lists into the SIP function. Yeah, And then we SIP them together, then we pair the elements together. So this is basically, this basically transposes, this one transposes the elements in the data. So, so that now we have three, um, three lists the f um, consisting of the column values. Okay, so the first list is the first column, uh, the first column value is the second, is the uh, second list contains the second column values and so on. And um, what do we use as expression? Expression, now we want to calculate the average. Okay, so we get a column, which is a list by itself as an input, and we want to modify this column to produce a numerical value. So we want to sum over, the, over all values in the column and, and divide by the length, by the number of values in our column. So in this, this part calculates the average of those values, of those four values, okay? And, and this basically gives us now a list of averages. And if you print the result, we obtain our average uh, values, okay? So this was exactly what we wanted, wanted to accomplish, okay? So we have the average 0.5, which is the average of the first column, the value 0.75, which is the average of the second column, and 0.25, which is the average of the third column. Okay, so this is what you want to accomplish. The first method in pure Python. It's a bit complicated with the SIP function, but if you understand the SIP function, I mean, uh, I could explain it for you, 20 minutes for you, but just go into your, um, uh, go into your Python shell and play five minutes with the SIP function and you will understand how it works. I mean, the SIP function is really easily understandable, but you need to play with it yourself. Uh, it's very difficult to, to um, like, learn it only, but only by listening to, to or watching a YouTube video, for example. Okay, so uh, what is the second way? The second way um, is using NumPy. So we import NumPy as NP and we create a NumPy array from the data. And NumPy arrays are, NumPy is very powerful functionality. I've written a book, Coffee Break NumPy, check it out. This book will really get you get you started with NumPy. So you will become a data science, uh, I would, intermediate. So from, from an absolute beginner, we in Python, we push you to intermediate level in data science so that you can already earn some money as a, um, as a developer, as a data scientist. So this book, uh, Coffee Break NumPy, uh, I, I make sure to add a link in the description below. It will give you, it will kickstart your NumPy skills so that you are able to um, do the data science stuff that is necessary for your um, organization. Okay, so um, uh, NumPy has an average function and the average function takes one argument, two arguments. So one argument uh, is required, which is the array over which you want to average. But now if you, if you simply, if you only add the array to the average, then we will it will calculate the average over all values. But now we want to average along a certain column, uh, along a certain axis. Those columns are uh, called axis in NumPy and the, the, like the column, this is just, you have to remember this, the columns have uh, axis um, index zero. Uh, if you want to average uh, um, um, uh, the values in the different rows in our, in our data um, variable, then you need to specify axis z uh, one, okay? But we want to average over the columns, which is axis zero. And um, now, if you print the result, you will see that the that we also obtained all three average values here, okay? So um, it takes a bit longer because you need to import NumPy and so, so it takes like a split second longer, but it uh, leads to the same result. And it's as concise, I would say. I mean, of course, you need to impl import NumPy. But then you could also write this in a single line of code as we did with list comprehension here and uh, it works beautifully. Um, and the, th the, third, the third method, um, I would say it's just, it's just for learning purposes. You, should, you wouldn't use it in practice actually. So you, we use the statistics module and then we calculate the result also using um, uh, the map function. So the map function uses the statistics.mean function. So this the map function applies a certain function to each element in an iterable. And what function do we apply? The statistics mean function. Okay, so we calculate the mean, and now the mean, the mean of what? And here we again we want to have this. We want to use the same trick, this zip, and then we unpack the data to it. This transposed matrix basically, so that we have as each as element. So each element here of this iterable is basically the column 
uh, list. Okay, so these values in, in the column, this is an element. So and here we want to calculate the mean on this element. Okay, so this is how it how you would do it basically. And um, yeah, we apply this function. Now we need to convert this to a list because the map function simply returns a map object, which is not like you. It doesn't has it doesn't show nicely in the in the shell. So we convert it to a list and we obtain exactly the same results. Okay, so these were the three methods to calculate the column average of a list of lists in Python. And um, I mean, if you don't, if you do more numerical computations, then I would recommend method two because it, I mean, NumPy is just much more flexible and much more powerful than just pure Python. So if you, if you, if this is not the only computation in your code, then maybe import the NumPy library. Otherwise you can, you can also quickly um, do it with pure Python functionality, like the built in sum function, the built in length function, this comprehension and the built in zip function. But this is a bit more difficult to understand for beginners. I would say intermediate to advanced Python coders, they will have no problem understanding this because I mean, they, they just know the zip function with data, with the unpacked um, data. It's just, it's just transpo uh, um, transposing the matrix. And um, uh, yeah, then we have a simple matrix aver uh, averaging over the column vectors. Okay. Thanks for listening to this video. If you want to apply your data science skills in practice, then think about becoming a Python freelancer. Python freelancing is really one of the mega trends these days. Um, many people, so um, the, the, the workforce in the 21st century basically will consist, in my prediction, mainly of Python, uh, of freelance, freelancers. So why? Because for, for companies, it's much better to hire a freelancer that solves a small problem um, or solves a medium sized problem or even large problems to hire an agency of freelancers. Um, because now they are much more flexible, they can access talent everywhere in the world. And I mean, even if, of course, many companies will have employees, but many companies companies will also rely on freelancers to do stuff. It's just a much more efficient workforce if you divide the work. So if you if I can if I can hire a freelancer in um, uh, in the U.S. who is like who is perfect at writing, and he hires me, I'm perfect at uh, encoding, for example. Then uh, both of us benefit yeah so for example he can finish a task that takes me two hours a writing task that takes me two hours in half an hour and i can finish a ta coding task that takes him two hours in half an hour so both of us so we can finish the same tasks in half an hour if we outsource if we don't outsource to 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 freelancers then both of us need to to do two hours of work okay so basically it's a like there's an inherent logical argument um, of outsourcing as much as you can, as much of your non-core uh, com um, um, competencies, <laughs> it's not even a work, but <laughs> non-core strengths um, as possible. Okay, and that's why freelancing goes up. Currently, you see, you see it explodes everywhere. There are more and more Upwork developers. And if you want to pa participate in this mega trend and check out my Python freelancer course, uh, there's also a link in the description below. Otherwise, just Google Finkster Python Freelancer course. It's the only uh, Python Freelancer course there is, surprisingly. And it's also like a very thorough, um, thorough course that shows you how to, from zero, like from earning zero dollars per month to earning two thousand, four four thousand dollars per month. It depends how much time you spend, but many of my freelancers earn, earn a few thousand dollars. Uh, working only part-time uh, like as an additional income stream to their employed uh, income streams and you can do it everywhere you can do it from home as I'm doing it uh, I show you like everything I know about creating a thriving Python freelancer business so check out the course it's really awesome and uh, I get a lot of positive feedback about the course and um, I have even spent like two years optimizing and tweaking it I have hired other freelancers to show you everything they they know about um, their fields of expertise so it's like it's a fun course and it, it brings you brings you on track it's like it's it will be a very good investment um, if you think about becoming a Python freelancer okay thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video bye